Shalom, Yasharel, giving all praise, glory, and honor to Yahusha Hamashiach, our Lord and our Savior, thanking him for that precious blood that was shed for all of us on Calvary's cross. Family, I'm going to get right into it today. I've got a lot to cover here in a short amount of time, but I am going to be picking back up on the virgin birth of Yahushua. Was it a lie? Was it a deception? And we're going to jump right into the scriptures using the King James Version Bible and also the Sefer. I'm very troubled and disturbed in my spirit. First, let me just give a little talk here before we get into this word. I see the problem out of a lot of the comments that I'm receiving that we are having. The problem we're having with most of our Israelite family, our brothers and sisters, a majority of you are not born again. You, not, you have not been born of the Ruach, Hakadesh, and born of water and of the Spirit. So this is our main problem we are having here when it comes down to Scripture. The Bible says that the carnal man cannot understand the spiritual things of God. So you can't read the Scriptures with a carnal mind without the Ruach. The Ruach has to lead and guide you in all things. So yes, first of all, I believe that you should be baptized in water. Every Israelite believer, every family of Yasharel should be baptized in water in the name of Yahusha. You should be baptized in water in the name of Yahusha. You should do that for not only the conscience sake, but an inward cleansing. The Bible says not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a pure conscience towards God. And because Yahusha was also baptized, you should be baptized, first of all, because baptism uh, symbolizes a liquid watery grave. It symbolizes Yahusha's crucifixion that we go down in water, we are buried with him in death, and we rise up in life and his resurrection as a new creation, a new creature with a new mindset. No longer are you using your mind, your ways, your thoughts, your concepts, because as high as the heavens are, that's how high our Yah's thoughts are from your thoughts. So that's the first problem that we're having here, family. Second problem is most of us have not been filled with the Ruach. I know how the Christian church taught, which is a stepping stone to where we are now. The Christian church taught that you had to tarry, that you had to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Till you got the Holy Spirit, till you receive the spirit of God. Tarry means to wait. I do believe that you must wait for the Holy Spirit to endow you with power. And I don't care what a lot of you might say, what a lot of you might say, but in the book of Acts, just about every time someone received the Holy Spirit, they spoke in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. There's a difference in speaking in unknown tongues and there's a difference in speaking in other tongues as the scripture talks about. So when you are filled with the Ruach, Hakadesh, signs and wonders should follow you. And you should also have different desires. You should be transformed, have a new mind. So yes, when you receive the Ruach, I believe that you should speak somewhere in your life with tongues. There should be some evidence. There should be some dynamite power in your life. So that's the main problem we're having. A lot of you feel, well, speaking in tongues is not necessary. What was done in the book of Acts, it continues on. It did not stop with the apostles. It did not stop with the disciples. It is a continuation today showing that you have been filled with the Ruach. So when you get down on your face and pray, you shouldn't just use ordinary language when you talk to God. When you get down on your face in prayer, you talk to Yah. You should get down on your face and you pray and you get into the spirit and you get into that other heavenly language that only you and the Father understands so you can circumvent and go around the enemy So, because the enemy can understand all your other language and what you're talking about. So you speak that other uh, heavenly language that only you and the Father understand and comprehend what you are saying. So that's the second problem we're having is because people are not born again. They are not filled with the Ruach and they have not been baptized in water and they are using their carnal mind to understand spiritual things. So first, that's the first issue we're having here before we get on to this virgin birth. You're trying to use your little 
philosophical ideals, your mind, your reasoning, your concept, what sounds logical to you. And when the Bible, when it comes down to this book of faith, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. I am one of those that walk by faith. I believe what this book says. Yes, there are some words that has been twisted, the meanings that are missing here and there. But as far as the main concept of salvation coming from the Son, God, Yahweh, being manifested in flesh, that concept is there. We understand the Bible. And a lot of you brothers and sisters, you have this thinking, like I spoke to one brother through the YouTube messages, and he says, all you need is the Old Testament. You don't need the New Testament at all. Get rid of the New Testament. You don't need none of that. That's why you guys' logic is flawed in your thinking. Any Israelite out there thinking that you don't need the New Testament, what the Apostle Paul, Peter, the disciples said, the groundwork, the foundation they laid, that's your first concept why you're screwed up in the head. Is your first putting away the tenets of the faith. And when I'm done with this uh, teaching on the virgin birth, I know the Ruach had me teaching on the lynching of Yahusha and talking about slavery and uh, homoeroticism and how the uh, slave masters ate us, cannibalism and all that kind of thing. But you know what? I think I need to go back to biblical basic doctrine the tenets of the faith. Paul said when you should be teachers of the word, you have need that you be taught once again the beggarly principles, the, the rudiments, the fundamentals of the faith. We got to go back to Bible basic principles with prayer, with baptism, and receiving the spirit of God, the, the doctrine. Before you can move on to the deeper things in God, before you can move on to the apocalypse and end time Bible revelation, we need to go back over basic Bible fundamental principles, which is the foundations that the apostles and the prophets built on that cornerstone, that rock, Yahusha Hamashiach. So we're going to have to go back there and I'm going to have to teach a foundation and build you guys up in your most holiest faith. So you're not being twisted and turned with every wind and every doctrine and every curveball that someone's throwing at you, having itching ears. Many are going to be deceived in the last days for there are many anti mashiachs out there. Many antichrists are out there that are teaching false doctrine against Christ. So first of all, brothers and sisters, we're going to go right into that. After I said all of that, we're going to go to Genesis 3 and 15. Most of us know about Adam and Eve, and we know about the fruit, the forbidden fruit that they were not supposed to eat, and Eve was deceived, and Adam was in the transgression with her because Adam was there with her when she gave him of the fruit, and how the serpent, Satan being a, a, a angel of light, coming as a ministering angel in light, uh, uh, clothing himself deceitfully, hiding his image and who he really was, he deceived them. And they ate of this fruit of this tree. And therefore sin came into the world. So now that sin has come into the world because man chose to follow Lucifer. They chose to disobey Yah and to follow the ways of Lucifer, that old dragon, the serpent. Here we have in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, the first messianic promise of the Messiah that is to come. So let's deal with this word seed. Let's deal with this false doctrine teaching, this heresy that is coming from camps and other different Israelites that are teaching there was no virgin birth. First of all, it says in chapter Genesis chapter 3, the book of Bereshit, the book of beginnings, chapter 3, verse 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. That word enmity there means I will make an enemy between thee and the woman, between thee and the woman. All right. And it says, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. So number one, there are three things that are being told in this scripture that we need to really get the gist and the understanding of three things where it says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. This is Father Yah speaking to that serpent, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. 
thee and the woman. So number one, Satan is the enemy of the human race. So that word enmity means enemy. He is a enemy to the human race. That's all he is. He is a deceiver. He has a threefold ministry to steal, kill, and destroy. And it says that this enmity, he will have hostility. He will have hatred. He will have antagonism towards the human race. That's the number one principle we get out of and I and I, Yah, will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thee, Satan, and the woman, the seed of the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. So number two is a spiritual barrier between thy seed, Satan's people, and her seed, God's people. Satan has his serpent people, and we've been learning a lot. The Khazarian people, the Khazarian Jews, who are of the synagogue of Satan, and we deal with that seed that has been spread through the lineage and the genealogy of Esau, how he has mixed with all nations and nationalities. He has mixed his seed, the serpent people. I talked about slavery, how these people could sit there and look when a man, woman, boy, or girl was being lynched on a tree and how they would maim, mutilate, cut off body parts and pieces and they would use them as souvenirs and trophies and pass them out to their family and to their children. What kind of people could even do what they did and burn bodies, roast them and eat them and commit bear bucking acts with them, uh, all these kind of acts with these people? What kind of people could do this? So we see here and number two, that there is a spiritual barrier, buck breaking. Yes, they did. They committed atrocities. They committed buck breaking acts on these men, uh, these Israelite men, these Hebrew Hebrews, they called them Hebos, they called them. So they could number two is a spiritual barrier between thy seed, which is Satan's people, the serpent people, and her seed, God's people. So we have enmity there. We have hatred there. We have antagonism there. We have hostility there. Number three, uh, the seed of the woman. Now let's deal with this seed of the woman. First of all, we understand that a woman does not carry the seed. The man carries the seed. So when we get into this, seed in the Hebrew word means zera. Zera is what seed means. Zera, which means fruit, posterity, or child. So when the Bible speaks here, the first messianic promise in Genesis 3 and 15 about the seed of the woman, it is not talking about the seed of man, the semen that man has. The seed of the woman here is considered in the Hebrew word Zerah as fruit, the fruit of her womb, posterity, or child. This is her lineage. This is her uh, genealogy. So the seed of the woman, Yahusha, would deliver the death blow to Satan, but in so doing, he would be bruised himself. And we get into that when it says, it shall bruise, let me go back up, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, one, and between thy seed and her seed, two, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel, speaking to Satan. Father Yah's talking to Satan. Now, when Yahusha dies on the cross, here he is going to step on the serpent's head. He is going to step on Satan's head. He is going to crush. He is going to deliver the death blow crush to Satan's head. But as he does that, he is going to be bruised. His heel is going to be bruised. Well, how was he bruised? He was bruised on Calvary's cross. So that's what we have there as the number third important thing I need you to see in this scripture. So it says, it shall bruise. Who is it? The seed of the woman, the seed, the child, the posterity, the uh, uh, fruit of the woman. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel and so doing. 
So the seed of the woman, Yahusha, he would deliver the death blow to Satan, but in so doing would be bruised himself upon Calvary's cross. So bruise his heel, Yahshua bruising on the cross and the crushing of thy head is Satan's kingdom. So Yahusha takes his foot and he steps on Satan's head and his kingdom and he crushes it and he delivers a death blow. But at the same time, while doing that, his heel would be bruised on Calvary's cross during his lynching or crucifixion, as some of you would say. All right. So we've dealt with that. So I want you to see here, brothers and sisters, after dealing with that, we have what is Adam. Adam chose because everyone was in the loins of Adam. When Adam was first formed and created here on earth, all of mankind was in his loins, was in his seed. So death reigned from Adam to Moses. So in man's seed, man's seed was corrupted. It was tainted. That's why when a baby comes into the world, that baby has not committed any sin, but that baby is dying as soon as it comes out the mother's womb because death is on that baby because of the seed of man. Every man that gets with a woman and procreates, he produces nothing but death and sin because man's seed is corrupt. It is tainted. So we see here from the beginning, death reigned from Adam all the way down to Moses and even after the similitude of all men. All men have the spirit of sin and death on them because their seed is tainted. So this is why we see that Yahusha could not come from the seed of man. And, uh, and, and, and there, it was all of this time that the seed, the lineage, the genealogy had to be preserved because Satan knew and his demonic angels, uh, they knew the fallen angels. That's why they tried to come through the angels having sex with women. They tried to corrupt that lineage, that seed, that godly line. It was the seed of David. That's why the Bible starts off in the book of Matthew. We're talking about first the king. David because the seed had to come through King David from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So it was not David's seed per se, but it was from the line of David. All of these great men came from the line, the lineage, the king of David, because the king, the Messiah, he had to sit on the throne of Israel. That's why he told David that his kingdom would be an everlasting kingdom because Yahusha, who was coming after the order of Melchizedek, was going to sit on his throne forever through that lineage, that genealogy, and that seed. Okay, so let's go to Romans chapter 5. We're going to go to Romans chapter 5. You know, when you deal with me, I'm a Bible man. So we're going to deal with scripture first. We're going to get into God's word and deal with scripture because I believe the Bible. I believe this book. I believe you need the New Testament. These brothers out here teaching saying you don't need no New Testament. All you need is the Old Testament, the Torah, and that's it. That's false doctrine. That's why you all are being swayed. That's why two-thirds of you are not going to make it into the kingdom of Yah. You will not make it. Because you are being thrown. You have itching ears. You want to hear lies. You want to hear logic. We walk by faith and not by sight. Get God's word in your mind and your spirit. If God said it, it is so. There is nothing too hard for God. Nothing is impossible with God. God began in Genesis 3 and 15 to unfold his revelation of what he was going to do. How he was going to bring salvation and save Yasharel by his own arm. He said, I brought salvation. Not through Joseph. Joseph didn't beget this Yahusha. Or when you get to Matthew and you read Matthew, the genealogy, all the way at the top, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Abraham begot Isaac and so and so all the way down. Matthew is very critical when he, in the words that he uses, when he get, when he gets down there to Joseph being the husband of Mary. And the Sefer messes up for some reason. It says the father of Mary and they uh, brought forth and they, they and they had, had Yahshua. 
It did not say Joseph begot Yahshua. It's not what the scripture said. Of whom was born. Yahshua was born of Mary. So he could have just came all the way down that first chapter in Matthew. And when he got down to Joseph said Joseph begot Yahshua. But he did not say that. He did not say that at all. So let's go here to Romans chapter 5 verses 12 uh, through 21. And the scripture reads on this wise. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. Well, somebody said, I wasn't born. I didn't sin. So why are we going through these consequences? Just as the scripture says, wherefore, as by one man sin entered entered into the world. Remember, I just told you, we were in the loins of Adam. We were in Adam's semen. Even though we were not born or created yet, we were in one man's loin. The first Adam is of the earth. The second Adam is from heaven above. See, that's the difference. Brothers and sisters, those of you that are trying to say Joseph and Miriam came together and they begot Yahshua, that is a lie. Joseph and Mary never got together and produced the man child Yahshua because the scripture says the first Adam is of the earth. The second Adam, he is of the heaven, the Lord of heaven. He comes from heaven. So it says, wherefore, as by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world. Adam brought sin into the world and death by sin, death came by that sin. So in man's seed is sin and death. Every time a man procreates with a woman, all he does is create death and sin. So if Joseph would have got with Mary and produced the man child, Yahusha, all he did was create death and a sinner. That was it. He brought him into a world of sin. That's why the seed could not come from a human biological father. The seed had to come from the Ruach HaKadosh, which is masculine. It is not feminine. That's another lie that these Israelites are teaching. When he, the Holy Spirit, will come, he, masculine, he will teach you masculine. He will teach you all things and bring all things back to your remembrance. Yahshua had to leave so he, the Holy Spirit, could come. The Miriam was overshadowed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit overshadowed her and produced that seed in her. That seed had to be holy. That seed had to be without sin. That seed had to be untainted. That seed could not produce a seed of death, but it had to be a seed of life. That's where you brothers are missing in that. When you're sitting here talking about, oh, Joseph and Mary got together and that's how Yahshua was born. Well, Yahshua was born into death and into sin. And why was the Son of God even manifested? So that he might take away death and sin. That's why we have eternal life through his blood and upon believing on his name. Let's go back to Bible, people. Believe in the Bible. Believe in the scriptures. So it says here, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. Now, even though these other men did not sin, they weren't even born. They hadn't even come into the earth's terra firma. Yes, yet and still they all sinned and they all have death reigning over them. Why? Because we were all in the loins of Adam. We were in his seed. His seed was corrupted. So when Adam got with Eve and they produced, every child that came from there on then was born with death over their head and sin. Every child. So the uh, Yahusha, uh, our Savior, our Redeemer, Yahusha Hamashiach, he had to get out of that seed. He was born of a woman. He was born of flesh and blood, but the seed had to come from Yahuwah. The seed had to come from the Father. The seed had to come from the Ruach. The Father, the Son, and the Ruach, they are all one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That Word, Yahusha, is the Word made flesh. So we see 
So it says, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. All sin, even though you weren't even born yet, because your forefather, Adam, carried in his loins sin and death. So therefore it was passed down to all men, all women, all children, every boy, every girl, everyone that splits the matrix comes into the world of sin by the way of the man's semen, his seed. So that's why Yahusha was free from sin because he did not come from the co-opulation of a man's seed. The woman has the egg. He, the, the seed was perfect because it was holy. It was of the Ruach, Hakadesh. I don't care how many other stories out there. Mizra. I don't care about all them other Egyptian stories they talk about. This is the true biblical story of what occurred and what had to take place. Because brothers and sisters, you're not making sense talking about Joseph and Mary got together and produced Jesus, Yahusha. It was sin, sin and death. You see the logic? Now this is the spiritual logic. This isn't your natural logic. This is spiritual logic. For until the law, sin was in the world. Sin was in the world till the law came. Sin is not imputed when there is no law. The sin didn't start getting imputed until the law came. You've got these laws in the beginning. You got the Noahic law. Uh, Noah's law. Then you start getting into the uh, Mosaic law. All of these different laws, then the Davidic law, all of these laws started to come. But where there is no law, there is no sin. You can run that red light as long as there is not a law saying that you can't run the red light. You can drive down the street 70 miles an hour as long as there's no speed limit sign posted saying 35 miles an hour speed zone. So where there is no law, there is no sin. Sin was always there, but there was no law to define sin. The law had to come so that it could define what sin is. Now, when that speed sign goes up saying 35 miles per hour, you are in sin. You are breaking the law, driving 65 miles an hour. Okay, we got that. Let's move on. Verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Why did death reign from Adam to Moses? Because in Adam, who is the first created man, in his loins was the seed of death and sin. So everybody died. Everybody had to experience death because of Adam. Okay? Everybody walked in sin and knew about sin because of Adam, because of his choice. Nevertheless, Death reigned. Death had full power. Death had full control. And it reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, those that had not sinned after the similitude. Anybody that even looked like that was human, like of Adam. All right. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Adam was the first Christ that was to come. And then the second and the last Christ come from above. Adam is of the earth. He is earthly. Uh, the second Adam, Yahusha, is being compared, allegorically speaking, as the second and the last Adam. He is from heaven above. One Adam is made from the dirt of the ground. The Adam, other, the other Adam comes from heaven above. But he was a man, just like you and me. I'm not taking away his fleshly side. He was 100% flesh and he was 100% God at the same time. And I'm going to get into the Sefer and the wisdom of Solomon when he talks about all kings. So you stay with me till the end. I'm going to end on that note and I'm going to break that fallacy teaching down that the wisdom of Solomon is talking about all mortal men. You got to understand what mortal men means and what he's talking about. So we're going to get into that. Let's move on. So it says in verse 15, but not as the offense so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, 
much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ has abounded unto many. So by one man, the offense of many will be dead. So how much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ hath abounded, Yahshua hath abounded. So by one man came death and by another one man came the gift of grace and life eternal. Verse 16, and not as it was by one that sin, so is the gift for the judgment of was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense, by Adam's uh, one man's offense, death reigned by one. Death reigned by one man, by Adam. Adam spoke death on all of us. When Adam did what he did and chose to disobey the Most High Yah, and he ate of that fruit with that woman Eve, he chose to put us all under the curse of sin and death. One man did this. So the scripture says in verse 17, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So now we are going to have an abundance of grace and we're going to have the gift of righteousness by one man also who is Yahusha Hamashiach. Verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification for of life. For as by one man's disobedience, by Adam's, one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. We became sinners off of one man's choice. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. By the obedience of Yahusha Hamashiach, filling the Torah, filling every commandment, doing everything he had to do to filling it to the T, uh, dotting every I. Every jot, every tittle, he completed the law. He did not sin at all. So by him came righteousness and came life by one man. All right, verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord, by Yahusha Hamashiach. All right. I want to take you now to 1 John. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John here. We're going to read chapter 3, verses 4 through 5 is one I, what I want to highlight. 1 John chapter 3, verses 4 through 5. And it says, And ye know that he was manifested. This was the whole purpose of Yahusha Hamashiach coming into the world. If it was not for this, well, what else was it? If, if Joseph and Mary produced him, he did nothing for us because he was born in sin and in death. But this is the main reason why he came into the world. Let's see what the apostle John says that some of the camps and Israelite brothers and sisters teach. You don't need that new Testament. All you need is the Torah. All you need is the old Testament lies, nothing but lies. Chapter three, verses four and five, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. And we, and ye know, and you know that he was manifested, he was made known to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. That's the reason why the son, Yahusha, was made flesh. And that's the reason why the rock Hakadash overshadowed Mary, impregnated her, and that seed came into Mary. And she birthed a son into the world who was not of a corrupt, tainted seed of sin and death because that seed was not tainted with sin and death because he came and we know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. So there was no sin. When you get a man and a woman together, they produce death and sin in that child. 
This child was not produced with death and sin. Even though he had to die to save us, that was the flesh side. He did not walk and fulfill sin. But he was raised up by the power and the glory of the father, the Ruach HaKadosh, on the third day, raising him up from the death of the grave. So when we get into the wisdom of Solomon, we are going to see what Solomon talks about. All men enter life this way through the, uh, or they enter life through a woman's womb and they all die and go out the same way like mortal men. But see, Yahusha was not just a mortal man. He was God manifested in flesh because he did not die and stay dead. He resurrected. So what Solomon is talking about here is all mortal men. But here you're dealing with a God man, a man that put on a terrestrial body. He came from heaven above as the Lord, but to dwell on this terra firma, to dwell on this earth, he had to put on an earth costume. In order for you to go into the heavenlies, you've got to put on a celestial body where the angels are, where the spirit of God abodes into the heavens. See? Your, your flesh and blood cannot inherit heaven. That's the reason why we must all die or you must be transformed during the catching away, during when Yahusha comes back and we are changed from mortal to immortality, where you put on, you take off this corruptible and you put on incorruptible. We are going to be changed. We are going to be transformed because when you go from the terra firma to the celestial, you've got to have on a celestial suit. So since the Lord from above came from a celestial body, he had to put on terra firma. He had to come down as a terrestrial in human flesh. And the seed had to be from the father because it could not be tainted with sin and death. So it says, and you know that he was manifested and made known to take away our sins and in him is no sin. So Yahusha could not have sin and redeem us. He cannot be born of Joseph and Mary, a corruptible, a tainted, an ungodly seed and, and bring forth life to take away the sins of the world. He could not. He could not see the womb. The reason why it had to be a virgin, it had to be a woman. And excuse me, I'm kind of blunt the way I talk because this is the way I got to talk to make you see what I'm saying. God just, just didn't choose a handmaiden. He just didn't choose a woman that had been all ran up and down through. The womb had to be a dark, clean place. It could not have been inseminated with all kind of men semen in there. It had to be a clean womb. It had to be a womb that never knew a man before. So that's the reason why she was a virgin. She said, I have never known a man. A man has never been in me before. A man has never inseminated me before. So that cooperation, that seed of death, that seed of sin was never in her womb. It was a clean womb, but yet and still Mary was a sinner. We do not believe in the immaculate conception where at the time Mary had Yahshua, she was sinless. That is the Catholic church lie and doctrinal teaching to worship Mary. And we don't worship Miriam. We know that. But that womb had to be a virgin's womb where no seed has ever been before because the father placed his seed there. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. So if you say Joseph and Mary got together and they produced Yahushua, that means he was born in sin and that could not be. Can't have that. That couldn't be. Let's go to Romans. Back to Romans chapter 1, verse 3. Romans chapter 1, verse 3. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, and I'm hitting some of these scriptures head on that our Israelite camps and some of our Israelite brothers and sisters are using. I'm taking your scriptures. See, as Israelites, we're not scared to take the scriptures because the Bible says, prove all things. So I'm proving all things. The same scripture you use that you twist and you try to manipulate by not using the Ruach HaKadosh to explain thoroughly the scriptures. I'm going to break that thing down like a fat kid walking in a candy store.
store eating chocolate cake and everything he see. As my pastor, Pastor Steve Darby, would say, we're going to overturn every stone, every scripture you use to throw a curveball to Yasharel. I'm going to take that curveball and make it a straight ball. It's coming straight to you. So it says here in Romans chapter 1, verse 3, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David. That word made means born of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Christ did not come from that actual seed of David. In other words, David didn't produce this seed. David came, what that scripture is saying there is David, Yahshua, comes from the lineage, comes from this, the, these, the loins of David the king, the descendants, the genealogy. So concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made, which was born of the seed of David according to the flesh. He comes from that lineage. He comes from that genealogy. There was no seed of Joseph that entered into Mary's womb to produce Yahusha. That seed started all the way back with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that seed started there and it produced a royal kingdom line, a royal kingship. So King David comes down through the loins and the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So King David comes down through this line and Yahusha, Yahusha, Hamashiach, comes down through this line also through this genealogy as you read the book of Matthew as we get into those genealogies there of who begot who you will see King David in that gene genealogy because Yahusha comes from that flesh that seed that lineage all right so I'm done there so that's what it means when it says which was made of the seed of David, which was that word made there means born, was born of the seed of David according to the flesh. Uh, let's go to Second Samuel here. I got something in Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 7 and 13. Second Samuel. I'm getting to it here. There we go. Second Samuel chapter seven, verse 13. Second Samuel seven to 13 says this. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Yahusha sat on that throne. Yahusha, he sat on that throne forever. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. He shall build a house. David, his son Solomon built the house because David he was a man of war. He shed too much blood, but his dynasty, David's dynasty, his kingdom, his lineage, he shall build a house for my name, for the name of Yah. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Yahusha was going to sit upon that throne and it would be an everlasting kingdom. A kingdom with no end. So that's how we see David's kingdom was an everlasting kingdom because Yahusha, after the order of Melchizedek, he is our king and he is our priest. Without mother, without father, without beginning of days or end of life, he, Melchizedek, is a type. Yahshua comes as a type and a shadow of this king and this priest after the order of Melchizedek, who is the king of Salem, who is the king of Jerusalem. Let's read here, Jeremiah chapter 33 and 17, and I'm going to be coming to a close. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 17, and it says, For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want or lack a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want or lack 
a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. So we see there, as I explained, that Yahusha was going to sit upon that throne forever and it was going to be an everlasting kingdom. All right, let's get into my last, my, one of my last scriptures here. Let's get into uh, the book of the Sefer, the wisdom of Solomon. Chakma Shalama. Chakma Shalama, the wisdom of Solomon. Chapter seven. Let's get this scripture that the camps are using to teach this and let's break this down. This is King uh, Solomon speaking one of the wisest men to walk the face of the earth, but wiser than him was Yahshua himself, who was in field with God, who was 100% God and man. So no one else was wiser than Yahusha, but this other man that comes after Yahusha, whose name is Solomon. Solomon was a very wise man because of the wisdom that Yah gave him that he prayed for. So it says here, chapter 7, verse 1, Solomon says, I myself also am a mortal man. Now let's see who Solomon is talking about. Solomon is talking about mortal men. Let's remember that Yahusha was also a man but he was also a God man. He had God, the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily in him. Even though he was 100% man, he was also 100% God. So the fullness of God dwelt in him. He was a God man. So Solomon says, I myself also am a mortal man like to all. He's talking about all mortal men. And the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. And the offspring of him. I come from the loins, he's saying, of Adam. Of the first of first made of the earth. And the offspring. I am the seed of him, of Adam, that was first made of the earth. Adam, meaning red man. Meaning the man made from the soil of the earth. So he says, I am the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of 10 months. Now, usually birth is nine months. He must have been a little bit overdue, baby, here. But he says, and like all mortal men, we are in our mother's womb. We'll fashion to the flesh, fashion to be flesh in the time of 10 months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man. Yes. Every normal birth usually comes through the copulation of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. Sleeping together produce this baby here. And when I was born, I drew in the common air, just like all babies. When I was born, I drew in the common air. I breathed and fell upon the earth. I walked, I talked, I stumbled, I fell upon the earth, I tried, I tried to get up and walk, I tried to crawl, I stumbled, I fell upon the earth, which is of like nature. And the first voice which I uttered was crying as all others do. All babies cry. So when, you, when, you, when you're born, you draw in the common air, you breathe, you walk. You stumble, you fall, you fall upon the earth, which is like by nature, which all babies do. And the first voice which I utter was crying as all others do. And see, Christ was just like us. He was a baby. He stumbled. He cried. He breathed in his, his first fresh air. But see, the difference was with Christ, with Yahshua, Hamashiach, he was not born of man's sperm. He came from the sperm above, from the Ruach HaKadosh, as noted in the book of Matthew and also in the book of Luke. Verse 4, I was nursed and swaddling clothes and that with cares, for there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. So what Solomon is saying here, all kings that are born upon the earth, they all split the matrix of a woman's womb. They all came this way. There is no king that is not born any other way. He is not referring to here Yahusha Hamashiach. 
that comes from heaven above, Yah bringing salvation by his own arm, saying, I'm going to save my people, Yahusha, meaning I will save my people. I will save my people from their sins. By my own arm shall I bring salvation. Not through the seed of a man. I, Yah, was going to do this thing. So he says, for there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For all men have one entrance into life and the light going out. So all men split the matrix, split, split the womb, coming into the world, and all men have the same like going out. All men die. But see, you can't compare Yahusha Hamashiach with these mortal men he's talking about at the top. Because even though all men are born into this world through a woman's womb, Yahusha did not come from the seed of Joseph, but from the seed of Yah. But he came birth through a woman's womb through the matrix. But even though Yahusha died, he is not like mortal men here. For he says, for all men have one entrance into life and the life Light going now. All men die. But see, Yahusha died and was resurrected by the power and the glory of the Father Yah by the Ruach HaKadosh, raising him from the dead on the third day. So he is not like unto mortal men. Mortal men, once they live and they die, they are dead until the resurrection. And that resurrection comes from the power of the Most High. Here, the son, he lives, he died, and he resurrected by his own power and by his own strength and the glory of the father. So you can't put him in this category here that Solomon is giving his wisdom and logic about all men splitting the womb, the matrix of a woman, and being produced by the seed of a man compacted in blood and crying as a baby, stumbling and falling, and we all die, that we live the same way, we all come into the the world one way and we all die and exit the same way. Yahusha was a God man. So you can't uh, uh, box him in to this one verse of scripture saying, see, this is how all kings came. King, Yahusha is the king of Yasharel. He did not come this way through a man's loin, through a man's seed, as I have proven. He could not because therefore that brings death. And that brings the sentence of sin along with man's seed. And my last scripture I'm going to read is 1 Timothy 3 and 16. 1 Timothy 3 and 16. This is my last scripture and I'm ending on this note. Brothers and sisters, the scripture says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Without controversy. There's much controversy in this. Because people don't understand. He's saying without controversy. There is no controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God, Yah, was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. And without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. The God, the mystery, great is the mystery of godliness. God was, Yah was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, preached unto the Hellenized Jews. He was preached unto the Gentiles, those Hellenized Jews, preached unto them, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So we see that here without controversy. Great is this mystery. This is a great mystery and you can't understand this mystery with a carnal mind. You have to have a spiritual mind and walk by faith because God's thoughts are not your thoughts. God can do the impossible. Yah can do the impossible. He can do all things. There is nothing too hard for our Yah. So brothers and sisters, I'm ending on that note. That's all I've got to say on this virgin birth, dropping the mic on this subject and moving on to another subject. I have delivered the word of the Lord to you. You believe what you want. You do your study of the scriptures. If you believe that Joseph and Mary brought forth this man child, as I have taught, he came in death and he came into the world as a sinner. If he came through the seed of Joseph. 
but he came through the seed of the Ruach Hakades, which means he came to man. He was manifested to do away with sin. He was manifested to take away sin. He was manifested to take away death. So in man's seed is nothing but death and is tainted with sin. So he could not come through the loins of a corruptible seed of a human blood man, but he had to come through a woman, but the seed was produced of the father. All right, Yasharel, I love you guys, and I'll get back to you in another video. Yashalom.